Hi guys. I hope you're doing okay today. I hope you feel a little better. This would be so wonderful. So wonderful. I would just love to um, address today uh, a comment that I received by David who spoke about his lack of emotions or lack of feelings or a lack of the ability to connect with people and just that, those type of feelings that he's having during his illness. And I just wanted to say that this is so common. I felt the exact same way. And you did not mention anything about crying so i don't know david if you have cried at all if you have had uh, moments where you have released that tension out of the body but i know that perhaps we have seen over many years that there's a lot of programming pertaining to men crying so if you have uh really programmed yourself to not cry over many years or that it's not okay for men to cry like many boys are brought up perhaps that is just so um excuse me kind of program that you are not releasing your emotions in that way that wouldn't surprise me i know for me i had episodes of crying it was a deep crying, like I was crying for my life, uh, my, for my whole life. It was a like a sob type of crying. I think many of you will, um, or perhaps are experiencing that type of crying as well. Um, but David, can you please just answer that question if you have cried at all? I'm just curious. But again, don't be surprised if you don't. Uh, my Feelings were very flat. I was detached. I, it was very hard for me to relate to people. Friendships fell away because I couldn't speak on the phone or I did not feel as if I could do chit chatty type things because I was too ill. So, and many people didn't understand my illness. What is this illness? Um, so it was very easy for people to detach from me, I feel, because to have a relationship, you need to be able to relate. And I could no longer relate, honestly, to anyone. I was so in fight or flight, stuck in it, that my job now was to work on getting my system to just relax. And that's why many of my strategies are about calming the sympathetic nervous system down. And so David, I remember saying to my partner, will I ever, will I ever be able to feel that I can relate to people? What do I do to relate to people? How do, I don't have any feelings. I had no feelings. I was so in survival that I shut that whole connection mechanism down in me just to survive. I couldn't relate to my mom. She was my mom. I, I couldn't relate to my partner. She was my partner, but I had, I had to get to the point where I had to get rid of all like roles and I, it, it sounds like being a daughter, or being a partner, all of those things, my personality, uh, my identity, I, I was shedding all of that. I was, I was breaking all of those things down in myself, like literally like starting over. So I couldn't, and, and I was so in survival that I couldn't, I couldn't talk about nonsense and talking about my illness was hard. So 
it was very easy for people to not be able to relate to me. I, I couldn't relate. I, and you need to have a relationship skill in order to relate to people. And mine was not there because I was too ill. So people did fall away. Friends did fall away. I couldn't talk to them. What's there to relate to this? And my illness was so interesting to everybody because they never heard of it. You know, is it even like, what does that really mean? You know, is it real? You know, who knows what people are thinking? You know, um, so, but bottom line, I would say, I just, I'm going to say that again, because I think it's huge. Because we go so into survival for ourselves and how we make our world has to get really small. And we have to stay like that for quite some time. That, that just changes you in no time. And we're not we're not we're supposed to be healing our our sympathetic nervous system to get us out of fight or flight so we can't take in that extra stimulation or conversation from others you know we can we're not even supposed to really watch the computer everything has to be calm everything has to be soothing you, you know you can't be on the phone you can't this you can't go outside you can't what tell me Tell me what we are supposed to be like during a journey like that. Things we're gonna, they're, they're going to start to shut down naturally in ourselves. We are gonna go more and more internally in our minds. And that's where our minds are so important that we are working on breaking this cycle of being stuck in fear and that's why i constantly say all good in all good in all soothing in meditation strategies are everything um but david you are not alone in this i am sure every single person with it, especially you know more in the advanced stages of course know what you're saying because I certainly do. I mean, it was incredible how shut down I was during this journey. Uh, and not being able to relate and talk and do all the things that you used to be able to do. And that's what you used to do with people that you knew. You know, you want to go, no, you can't, you can't do anything. So what are you supposed to be like? You change. And, you know, the people that fall away, there will be new coming. Your tribe, your new tribe will come. And they will understand you. Because you will be more of the real you. Because this old you, that was programmed, and that was this, and that was that, and the people pleaser, and yada, yada, yada. No. This, all these things are, are changing and certain people will stay with you and certain people will fall away and that's growth and that's what happens especially during something like this and because we are growing so much certain people can't be with us anymore and that's okay that's our healing that's our healing doing that for us and i always feel now it's all a process just for us to get in touch with who we are, what we want, how we want to do it this time around. 
It's like a new opportunity. It's a new opportunity to reinvent ourselves and get away from those shoulds, musts, have tos, program, old programming that just doesn't work for us anymore. But David, every single thing that you mentioned is spot on to what a lot of us feel. So just understand it. Just understand it. Don't judge it at all. And it slowly comes back when it's ready. Because again, we have to go easy because a lot of us are, you know, still in the cocoon, the chrysalis, and we're just, you know, we're not out there yet. So we're just watching things that we need to watch and we're healing and we are getting through it. But please, anybody, anyone that would like to also comment on these type of emotionless, detached, uh, no sadness, no sorrow. Let's, let's, let's comment about that because I find this whole thing fascinating and only people that I feel go through very serious illnesses, not just AFS, but anybody that has experienced a uh, great trauma, great uh, journey through an illness. I'm sure a lot of them can relate even to these feelings, but I do know AFS definitely, it's part of, part of the symptoms as well. So anybody, please comment, jump in, let me know what you think and let David know what you think too, because uh, we're all in this together, okay? All right, I hope this helps, David. Please take care. Bye-bye.